What's going on guys? Time to talk about my run in with demo people. Uh, it's been a very interesting week. It's been a productive week. If you didn't know, I own a car rental business. And at the beginning of this week, I had seven wrecked cars. And it, it's, it's been a pain. Um, I really didn't want to deal with it, but that was my agenda this week was to get those cars processed with insurance claims and to sell the cars. Now, if you didn't know, if you know the marketplace selling a wrecked car, you can make pretty decent money. And uh, that's one of the things I did. So I'm going to roll some footage. This footage doesn't include the wrecked BMW, but I'm going to roll that footage here to let you know what I was dealing with and the issues that I had. All right, the wrecked car parade. Since the door is going to have to be replaced, that's 2000. Fender, 2000. Headlight, 1000. That's 5000. Bumper, 3000. So this is like six to $7,000 worth of damage on a car that I only paid $10,000 for. This car has been rented out two, three times. First time it was wrecked. Second time it wasn't wrecked. Third time it was wrecked. And I get in the car, it smells like weed, a lot of weed. This car is wrecked. I've decided to sell this one because it keeps coming back. I'm still trying to get the police report on this one. I feel that this is going to be a total loss. Because the rear and front bumper is messed up. So I know that is 6,000 right there. And if there's frame damage, they may total this one out. And what sucks about this is I had a long-term renter in there that was never late. And due to hire cars policies, he's been locked out. This was hit by an Amazon driver, still trying to get information on that. This one was wrecked by a renter uh, I filed a claim. Hire car says they're paid it. It hasn't been paid. And this one was wrecked by a renter. I may just go ahead and fix this one. It's going to need a new radiator. And just push it out. I don't know. But this is one, two, three. All the Camrys are wrecked. All the Camrys I have are wrecked. Four, five, six wrecked cars out of 31. Now, I've been doing this six months. I believe a lot of people have been lying or they just don't have enough cars to get this type of exposure. But this is the car rental business. Fortunately, I can take these off as net losses off my taxes. So that's a positive. But currently I have six cars that are wrecked. Six out of 31. So let's talk about the first car that I sold. And it was that 2008 Lexus GS 350. Now, there are places online where you can sell wrecked cars and they will give you two, three, four hundred dollars for a car. If you have a wrecked car that is somewhat unique and rare, do not call these places up. I sold that wrecked GS 350 for thirty five hundred bucks and I'm getting an insurance check for fifty five hundred bucks. So this helps me minimize my loss on purchasing that car. Because that car, <laughs> it was only rented out four times and it had, was involved in two wrecks. 
So that is the first car that I sold. The second car that I sold was a 2007 BMW 335i. If you know anything about these cars, there's a little culture around these cars. And I put it up on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Incidentally, that Lexus went to the first person that contacted me. They showed up and they paid me what I wanted because essentially the car was wrecked, but it still runs. The engine is good. The transmission is good. So if you are pretty handy and you can do this work, you could get yourself a pretty good car for cheap. So that was the first car. The second car I sold was the BMW. And I, oh man, I put it on Facebook and I put it on Craigslist. I got 90 messages about this car, 90. I had someone offer me $500. And I just wrote back, LOL. I sold that car for 2,500 bucks with a blown engine. Renner, and th this, this, is, this is just the, the disgusting part about the car own business. The car will tell you when it needs oil. And the Renner ignored that message and kept drew, driving it and just blew up the engine and brought it back when the car was messed up. But to the right person, this car is very valuable because the seats are good. The seats were in excellent condition. The transmission was in excellent condition, the rims. So, and if you wanted, you were doing a project and I got hit up by a lot of people who had a project where they were trying to remodel or recondition a 335i and they needed what was called a donor car. Hood is value. The doors are value. The seats are value. So I knew what I had and I had a lot of people come at me. Oh, I'll pay you $500 cash money right now. I bet you would because you could turn around and make two to $3,000 without doing anything, just putting it back on the same platform. So once again, uh, got contacted me because I was only asking 2000. He said, I'll pay you 2,500. I'll be there first thing in the morning. Uh, he showed up, looked at the car, paid me 2,500. Life went on. Now, the Camry, the white Camry is a total loss. So I'm getting a check for that. And the silver Camry is a total loss. Actually, that kind of worked out because I'm getting a check for more than what I paid for the car. So this week we processed four cars. And tomorrow my goal is to process two more, depending upon how the weather goes. Now, this is where we come into run-ins with the demo people. And let me go ahead and explain some stuff. Um, one of the things that I did, I moved out of a 5,000 square foot house to an 1,800 square foot condo, right? So I had a storage unit with a washer, dryer, sofa set, bedroom set, and some other stuff. And that storage unit was costing me $257 a month. And then this, this like, I had the bedroom set sold three times. Cause you know, even though I am not quote a reseller, I, I did it for many years and I still have some pretty good skills with selling stuff on Craigslist, Facebook marketplace and eBay. And I set up an arrangement with this guy to do delivery and two times he failed me. I had that bedroom set sold two times and he couldn't deliver it in time. Cause this is something you should know. When you're selling some online and people say they're going to buy it, if they don't give you the cash, guess what they're going to keep doing? They're going to keep shopping. And the longer it takes for you to get that item to this person, the greater likelihood that the deal is going to fall apart because they're going to find something they like better. So if you can't get money, you're just screwed. You're just screwed. And I got to know this from the storage facility that my rent was going to go from 267 to 350, which is like $4,200 a year. The stuff that I had in there, because essentially I sold the rims from the Porsche for 2,500. I sold the washer and dryer for 800. I sold a treadmill for 2000. I sold a sofa set for a thousand. So it was moving really, really well. I got rid of a lot of stuff. But once again, I used to be in the storage auction business. And like, if you have stuff in storage and please listen to me, if you leave that stuff in there for two or three years, you have paid for it two or three times. 
So you don't want to leave stuff in the storage unit long term. So I had the storage unit in October, November, December, January. That's a thousand bucks. Now between the stuff that I sold out of it and the stuff I sold on eBay, I'm, I'm still ahead of the curve. But if I was to leave that stuff in the storage unit for a year, that would dramatically eat into my profits. So what I did yesterday, because the holdup for selling the bedroom set, and it's like the mattress. Everyone wanted a clean mattress. Is there any stains? That was a big question. And uh, the two people I sold it, you know, uh, I sold it to didn't ask that question. If I could have got it delivered, I would have been able to downsize because this is what I did. I woke up yesterday and I was like, okay, I'm getting rid of this problem issue, which is the mattress. So I'm just going to give it away because my rent is 250. And if I pay 350 next month, so I just gave the mattress set away and I gave the frame away. And this is where the demo people came in. I had someone ask me, was there any stains? I'm like, it's free. <laughs> You're trying to find the perfect situation. That, once again, you know my video, the demo people, the demo people are looking for the best situation to serve them. And uh, this young gentleman who's a hustler, he's like, I'll be there in 30 minutes. He came and got it. We loaded it on a truck. It's gone, problem gone. And then I was able to downsize from that storage unit, which um, February 11th would have been 357 to a storage unit that's gonna be $140. So essentially next month, I get a credit of almost 100 bucks. So my storage unit bill for next month is gonna be 40 bucks. And then it'll be 140. So once again, you gotta be on top of the money because when you have a business, a hustle, it's little things like that that can just kill your margins, just to kill your margins. So the mattress is gone. I still had the bedroom set and I've got it up there and I'm gonna work really hard next week to sell that bedroom set and to get rid of these. Cause like I said, we've got four cars processed. I feel, so this, this is where we're getting into the demo person. And it happened on eBay. First of all, you put something up, right? And then you get hit with all these low ball offers. They just hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you. I just ignore them. Because I know from experience, if you're not desperate, you have a very good chance of getting what you want if you can sit on it long enough. And I'm not desperate. So all of this stuff, I just ignore it, ignore it. And with Craigslist, uh, bedroom set. I was asking $700 for a bedroom set. This chick offered me 150. You know what I did? I blocked her. I, there was no point in responding. There was no point in responding because uh, essentially this person is pretty much where they are. I'm asking 700 and you're going to offer me 150. There ain't no point in even talking to you. So essentially I was blocking people left and right. They were coming at me with these extreme low, not even half, like 10, 15 percent of what I'm asking. And I'm just sitting there like block, delete, block, delete, block, delete. So let's get to the story. Uh, I got a guy who says he's coming for the silver 2010 BMW 355. Now this is car, another renter, and th this is one of the, the big problems with renting cars. Renters will do things to your cars that are not covered by insurance and they don't have the money to pay for. So this guy ran over something and he uh, messed up the radiator. The car drives fine. You can start it, it turns on. Uh, you could even drive it a little bit, but you know, once again, the, it needs a radiator. So I state clearly stated in the ad that the car was involved in an accident. I, you know, there's a dent in the bumper and the radiator ran over some other stuff, right? And once again, I outlined in the ad what was wrong with the car. And this is intro the demo person. This guy, he contacts me and he's like, I'm very interested in the car. I was like, okay, well, you know, today it's snowing in Georgia, so I'm not meeting anyone today. So we'll have to wait later in the week. He said, cool, I'm not leaving. Then he started to hit me with all these questions. Rule number one, the more questions that they ask, the more likely they are not going to buy. Once again, rule number one, when they hit you up with a whole bunch of questions, they're not going to buy. I'm telling you, I've done, I've done this for years. Like the Lexus, they didn't hit me up with any questions. They showed up. 
the BMW, they, he didn't hit me up with any questions. He showed up. So when you get serious buyers, they're going to show up and they're going to ask one or two what I would call buying questions. Cause like, you know, the guy, you know, once again, with the BMW, it's like, it has a blown engine. It, you, you can't drive it. And uh, you know, and I was like, it might start, it might not. And the guy tried to start it and it, it kind of turned over, but it wouldn't start. So, but he went ahead and bought it. So this guy, he hits me up and then this is where we start with the demo finesse. He's like, Hey, can I test drive it? If I bring a radiator and I said, the car is in a commercial office building. There is no working on cars in the parking lot. So no, you can't do that. Once again, this is true. Uh, you cannot work on cars in my office leasing space. The, no one does that. So no, you can't. And then he, he hits me again. And I was like, also, I told him I took the tag off and there's no insurance on the car. And then he was like, I can put an insurance on it. And then he tells me he can change out the radiator in five or 10 minutes. Okay. I know that is a lie. All right. Change out the radiator. You're looking at about an hour. And then that's if everything works out, because if there's a piece missing or he breaks something, it, it could just turn into a whole cluster. And I'm just sitting there like, no. And then he asked the same question five times. It's like, I bring a radiator. I'm like, no, 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 no. And then this is where the demo person and personality comes out. He's like, why are you trying to sell a car for $5,000 that you can't test drive? And I went ahead and said, I've sold several cars that you cannot drive for a lot of money because I know the market. Because essentially he wanted to buy my car super cheap so he could flip it and do little or nothing to it and flip it and make a lot of money. And I'm not mad at that. I mean, that's the marketplace. That's the game. I'm not mad at it. But this is where the conversation fell apart and the demo person emerged. He's like, you are a scamming ass in. All right, so it's listed. Once again, the car has these issues. I listed the issues uh, and I'm just like, wait a minute. So I'll tell you the car has these issues, but I'm trying to scam you. And at this point, I realized I was dealing with a demo person. And then there was some stuff, let's keep it real and all this other stuff. And block and delete, block and delete. Because this person didn't even have close to 5,000. Let me tell you what he was gonna to try to do. He was gonna to try to finesse me down to 1,000 to 1,500 and then flip the car for what I was trying to sell it for. That's what he was trying to do. Cause he was like, Hey, I do the same thing you do and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. And I was like, no, 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 we're not going here. We're not going here. Cause see, I'm an experienced reseller. I know the game. I will tell you, I sold a 2004 Audi S4 on eBay for 12 grand. Why? If I put it on Craigslist, people would offer me three or 4,000. Uh, if you have a, a, a unique older car, there's a eBay and there's a site called bringatrailer.com. This is where you place these cars. You have to put your items in the appropriate place to get the money you want. And uh, I have someone, you know, depending upon what the weather's like tomorrow, who's supposed to be coming looking at that car and he's offered me 4,800. So one of the things that I have seen from this experience, because this is why, you know, I, I've been dreading this because I knew that I would get a bunch of people who would be wasting your time, who will come at you with these extremely low ball offers. Uh, essentially, I on Craigslist, I've got probably 50 offers. I just straight up deleted. And then um, this week, they should come get the direct Camry. And then it's probably some point next week, they should get the silver Camry. And then um, I will move on because essentially what I did is I sold the worst cars first because I knew that would be the biggest pain in the butt. So I just went ahead, gritted my teeth, called up the insurance adjusters and worked on that. 
and also uh, the missing Range Rover. The missing Range Rover, the police haven't been able to locate it. Hardcore hasn't been able to locate it. So I am going to get a check for that Range Rover. I've had to commit, and this, this, it's been a week. I had to com I had to fill out an affidavit, a statement saying that the car was stolen, and I had to get it notarized and send that in with the police report. So hopefully I get a check by the end of this month or the beginning of February for that. So eight cars. So I've got four processed out of eight. I feel tomorrow, if the weather holds up, I'm going to get five. And then I have two more cars that are, and I've got some more wrecked cars, but they're not super wrecked and i got a car with the bumper kind of hanging off that's you know i'm the easier stuff i'm saving that for later and dealing with the hard stuff first but i've been dealing with a lot of demo people who will get mad because they cannot finesse you to do what they want you to do like this dude was getting pissed off because i was like dude homeboy i know the game like years and years ago, and if you didn't know this, do you understand that you can sell broken phones, broken computers, broken TVs, not so much, but the phones and the computers, you can sell them all day on. I remember years ago, I, on a storage unit, I got this 17 inch MacBook that didn't come on. And I put on eBay, 17 inch MacBook has the uh, charger and everything. It won't come on. I have no idea what's wrong with it. And I listed it for a 99 cent auction. At the time, these MacBooks were going for like 3,000. That broken computer that would not come on sold for $750, $750. So if you have broken stuff and if you know where to sell it, you can make a lot of money depending upon, like I bought that storage unit for 30 bucks. And it had that broken laptop in it. It had some other Mac stuff. It had a camera in it. I think I ended up doing like $5,000 off that unit. So once again, if you understand the segmentation of the secondary market, selling a broken down or car that doesn't work, depending on what the car is, model, and if there's a culture like BMWs, like uh, the 2004, five, six, seven, eight, there, there's a culture around these cars. People love to rebuild them. So I knew that that car was valuable. Um, so selling it for 2,500 and, you know, I, I'm gonna take a loss on that because the car cost me 72. So I'm gonna take like a $5,000 loss on that off my taxes this year. And you know, a lot of you have been wondering like, um, I'm not taking losses off my taxes for last year because well, I'm taking some losses because I had a few cars that were messed up by renters that were inoperable and I made the mistake of selling these cars to these people that I told you not to because I, I completely forgot. You know, I sold a Camry in the Acura for like 700 bucks to one of these people. And then I had to take a loss on the Range Rover that I sold a CarMax. So, and I took a loss on the Porsche Cyan. So I will take those losses come up to about $30,000. What I'm gonna get to do since I own a car rental company is I can take depreciation. And man, depreciation ain't no joke. I got a BMW that a girl put 14,000 miles on this car in one month. So I'm going to be able to take depreciation of about 100,000, which is gonna help a good bit. So 100,000 on the depreciation, and I'm gonna be able to take 30,000 on the losses, and then I got receipts out the ass for repairs. I've got like receipts for about 100, all the money that hired car to car rental business made last year went back into fixing cars that renters were tearing up. So I'm going to be able to take about a $300,000 depreciation and loss off my taxes, which is going to result in me getting a refund this year. Um, 
you know, once again, but the demo people, the economy is turning because, all right, as a seller, and I'm gonna give you some tips on selling stuff online. You have to put forward a friendly and positive space. Whether you're selling something or posting an online ad, you cannot have these, hey, don't, if you like this way, don't come at me. That, that's offensive and it turns off a lot of people. And these demo people are so pressed by their circumstances, they don't care. I mean, dude called me a scam, like the car, has these issues i listed the issues i mean honestly you know um depending on what happens i gotta figure out if it's going to be worth it for me to fix that radiator fix the kidney grill and then there's going to be but here, here's the thing one you know scratch and dent sale like you can have a refrigerator at best buy that's in perfect condition it'll go for two thousand it gets a scratch or dent on it they're going to sell this sucker for 1200 so I got to weigh the cost of, is it worth me fixing, you know, if I'm going to get more money because I fixed the radiator? I don't know. I don't know. So we'll, you know, because once again, next week, I feel this week was successful for me to process four out of eight cars. Well, four and a half because, you know, we're still waiting on numbers for the Range Rover. But man, people need money. People were coming at me all kinds of ways. Like, I don't know how many people I blocked on Facebook Marketplace. Because essentially, if you're coming at me with an extreme low ball, low ball offer, there is no point in even having the conversation. Like, I had an iPhone, I got 25 low ball offers, and then I asked 889, and I had someone offer me 800 bucks. And I wanted 750 for it, so I took that offer. Because essentially, what I'm seeing is there's a lot of people who are not professional sellers. A professional seller would have never insulted me. You are a scamming. How am I trying to scam you when I'm telling you that the car has issues? But once again, that's like I'm dealing with a demo, a demo person. This is a person, you know, and he said some other stuff that I didn't even read. I just blocked him and deleted the conversation and kept it moving. Because, like I said, his goal was to get me from five thousand down to one or two thousand dollars, and then turn around and flip the car and make the money that I'm trying to make. Now, experienced sellers, they see my ad, they know that I know the marketplace, because uh, essentially these other, because it's like that's four wreck cars that are processed process the fifth one the sixth one i may fix i don't know but yeah this, this this is that's that's that was my week last week working on that stuff and then i got to start um prepping my stuff for my taxes and it just got me to thinking that so many people don't understand how to sell and how to buy online years ago uh, there was, when I was doing storage auctions, there would be something that would be called like a drought. Like you would try, you go out and there just wouldn't be nothing to buy. So I would go on Craigslist and I tried to buy people's garage sales. And I remember I met this lady and they had put up an estate sale. They were going to have Saturday and I contacted her Monday and I said, let me come to see what you have. I own a thrift store and I, I buy in bulk. So if you have a lot of good stuff, I may buy it all. So I go to her. Whole time, I'm super nice because I'm trying to get something from this woman. She has something that I want. Never would it have occurred to me to call her a scamming ass or to be mean or to be derogative. So the whole time I'm super nice and we were supposed to meet at one. She says, oh, I was like, no problem. I can meet you at three. And I meet her at three and, you know, we'll go through the stuff and it's a buy. I was like, OK, how much do you want for all of this? And she's like, if I have a garage sale, I'll probably make five or 600. You give me 500, it's yours, fine. And then I asked her this question because I had built a, a relationship with this woman. I had been super nice. I had been accommodating to her situation because she had something that I wanted. And I was like, do you have anything else? She said, there's some stuff in the basement. You can go down there and look at it. Jackpot. 
Duncan Fife table, nothing but antiques. I was like, what do you want in the basement? I'll take all everything in the basement. And she said, hey, give me a thousand bucks, 1500. Me and my guys, it took us two days to clean out that house. I made like $30,000 from being nice and accommodating. Nice and accommodating. This is what these demo people don't understand because they're so pressed by their circumstances that they will be rude, offensive. They, they have no relationship skills. They have no communication skills. None. Because this, this dude came at me and I was just sitting there like, you don't know who you're talking to. So I just blocked him and I, I'm just sitting there like, so you're trying to get something from me and you're going to insult me. You're going to insult me and talk reckless to me. And once again, just block, delete, cut it off. I've been doing that a lot because when you're dealing with a demo person, logic, reason, you're wasting your time. You're just simply wasting your time. And what I did is, you know, because essentially like last week I feel was pretty good. I feel this week is going to be pretty good because I get the rest of that stuff processed. And then um, I'm really glad I stopped buying cars for the car rental business because whew, eight messed up cars out of 31. That's almost 30 percent. And if I had a hundred cars, cause like this whole process of dealing with insurance, uh, shout out to USA. USA has been the best claims process. They fixed my car. I got a loss of revenue check. The best hands down situation out of all of them. And in time I will get these checks cause I've got a check for the Range Rover coming. I got a check for the Lexus not for Lexus, for the Camry. I got to check for the camera. And incidentally, all the cameras are wrecked. Uh, I'm working on trying to sell the Camry because the Camry, you can drive it. It only has 135,000 miles on it. I'm trying to sell that for five because the Camry cost me eight. So, you know, I'm trying to mitigate my losses, you know, because once again, um, renters are ruthless to your cars just put it this way for me to have 30 cars and to have eight wrecked cars oh also i gotta be honest two of the wrecked cars it wasn't the renter's fault and essentially i like it when it's not their fault because at this point i don't have to deal with um sedgwick which is the insurance company for hire car and that's one of the reasons that on one of those cars, I'm getting more for it than what I paid because I'm dealing with an outside agency. So two of the cars were not the renter's fault, but out the eight, six were renter. And I'm just sitting there like, man. So, you know, trending forward, if I were to have more cars, I would have more accidents. I mean, men lie, women lie, math don't lie. I mean, I just looked at the statistics. I looked at the trend. I looked at it as I got more cars, I got more accidents. I had more problems. I'm just sitting there like, so I am not buying any more cars for the rental car business. I'm not doing that because what's going to happen. And also I've talked about the economy is deteriorating because right now I have a bunch of people late. And I dread it, but I'm going to turn cars off and go get them. And that is just, honestly, I'm going to be real with y'all. I have not worked as hard in 20 years. 12, I've not worked that hard in about 14 years. Cause I was in the storage auction business. I used to work. I mean, I got to work. I got to be on top of these people. I got to communicate. I got to go get cars. I got, it, it's just a pain, man. It is just a pain. But what I have discovered, you know, since this is the Institute of Economic Thought, that the demo people are running to the resale markets with poor communication skills, poor attitudes and anger. And these people are not going to be successful because 
I can tell you as an experienced reseller, being kind, accommodating, nice, will get you much further than being an asshole. Because this guy, like once again, I can profile him. He, he doesn't have the money that I'm asking for. He don't even have close, he don't even have half the money. But he, once again, because he's black and I'm black, he felt that it was appropriate to use the, that nomenclature calling me the N word. And I was like, goodbye. Because uh, essentially, if you engage with demo people, your blood pressure is going to go up because you cannot talk sense to these people. I want you to think about it. This guy was trying to get something from me and he became insulting and degrading. And he was trying to get something from me. Like I was trying to get this stuff from this woman. I knew that she had some stuff that I wanted that I needed for my business. I was super kind, I was super professional, and that's the way I deal with everyone. Um, I was able to sell my treadmill. I paid 3,300 bucks for a treadmill. I sold it for 2,300 2, after using it for two years because I'm a professional seller and I understand what it takes to sell. And number one, you have to be nice to people. But this is something the demo people don't understand. They don't care. They don't care. Cause you know, one of the things I hate is this whole finesse that you have such, so, so much charisma and charm that you could be mean to someone and still get them to do what you want to do. Uh, not in my world. The minute he said that block, stop communicating because number one, and I, I had another car for sale. Uh, I had the Camry and someone was like, um, you know, since the car is wrecked, do this reflect? And I said, like, if the car wasn't wrecked, I'd be asking 8,000. So the price is reflecting that the car has issues. Because essentially when someone starts with you immediately on price, immediately, they don't have the money. They don't have close to what you're asking. And their goal is to bring you from where you are to finesse you down to maybe 50% of what you're asking for. And what I learned buying these cars, these dealers, I was coming in with cash money buying multiple cars and they, they barely budged on the price. They barely budged on the price. I had one guy was like, you know, this whole thing about the rental car market being, he's a bunch of hype. I said, no, it's not. It's not a bunch of hype. And, um, once again, you have to be in the position where you can sit on this stuff until the right buyer comes along. Because um, I want you to think about it. Apple, you have Apple and you have Samsung, you have a multitude. Apple iPhone is the most expensive iPhone on the market. And it's not the best iPhone according, and the best cell phone according to Marcus Brownlee and um, Dang, I can't I can't think of his name. He's a blonde guy with glasses. I think his name is Stu. But Apple be getting that money because see, one of the things you have to understand, there are several different markets. There is the demo low end market. These folks have no money, bad attitudes. They're struggling. They're starving. And then you have the middle market and then you have the top of the middle market and then you have the high end market. And there are different people like literally there's someone that's going to see my ad on Craigslist or Facebook marketplace. And it's like, I like that price. And they're going to contact me and they say, Hey, when can we get, that's what's going to happen. I know this from years and years and years of experience of selling that if I sit on something long enough and I continue, because once again, you have to continue to post it. You have to continue to put it out there. And the closer we get to tax season, the easier this is going to get because people will have money. And hopefully I won't have any of these wrecked cars by tax season and I'll be done with it. And um, yeah, I mean, this, this is dealing with it. I, I'm just, I'm just, cause this just happened a few hours ago. This just happened. I'm just sitting there like, you're trying to get some from me, but you're going to be mean and insulting. In what planet does that work? What planet does that work? And 
And I've been dealing with demo people on eBay. I've been dealing with them on Craigslist. I've been dealing with them on Facebook Marketplace. And once again, block, delete, don't communicate with these people. All they're gonna do is waste your time and they're gonna try to finesse you. And like, here's something else. And I want, and this is a message to the demo people. If you have so much charm and charisma and swag and finesse abilities, why is your ass broke and poor? See, that's a reality. You don't have any money. So that means that you're finessing and ain't really working out. It ain't really working out. Because I ask you that question, if you have so much swag, charm, and how come you broke and poor and living in the hood? Tell me that. One of the person who stole my 740 and got arrested was a demo person. He was a demo person. And I should have took the car back the first time I turned it off because I wouldn't have had the issue. I wouldn't have had the broken windshield. I wouldn't have had the broken air vent. And this is something else. If you want to get in the car rental business, know that people who rent your cars will allow other people to drive your cars. And that's a big, big problem because if someone else is driving that car other than the renter, which the insurance is on the person who rented the car, the insurance company ain't going to pay out. Ain't going to pay out. I don't know how many times I literally here. This is this happened to Range Rover before it got stolen. I was going to Kroger and I looked back and I saw that Range Rover looks like mine. And I went around and saw the license plate and I actually pulled up on dude and I was like, why are you driving this car? Oh, I'm getting gas for my wife. I have done that like five or six times because these people will rent your car and let someone else drive it like it ain't nothing. And as long as they don't wreck it, it's really not a big deal. But if they wreck it, it becomes a huge deal, huge deal. And that Range Rover ain't been nothing but problems since I have it. Play a player, the other dude. I have filed three police stolen car reports on that Range Rover. So part of me is kind of glad that it's gone and I'm gonna get a check because uh, my thoughts was, you know, after this time, because essentially I thought I would do a police report because this is the only car that they haven't recovered. And they, they recovered, I was just gonna put it up for sale because it keeps bringing these kind of people who want to flex, who want to floss in the Range Rover, but they don't have no money. They have no money. And I consistently have seen trends with certain cars. The Acras, I, I typically didn't have that problem. And the Camrys, I typically, but the Camrys, all three Camrys were wrecked. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, all three of them. And I'm just sitting there like, God. So I actually, if we include the Mercedes, I've had nine wrecked cars out of 30. And once again, if there's something that's called forecasting and modeling, taking current data points, so we can safely assume that if I had 100 cars, I would have 20 to 30 that would be wrecked at any time. And I'm telling you, just dealing with what I'm dealing with has been a logistical nightmare calling the insurance companies, checking on them, pushing people, going through the Christmas break, waiting for folks to come back to work. It, and I'm just sitting there like, I'm not buying any more cars for the rental car business. I'm not doing it. Um, because as I buy more cars and increase it, my problems elevate, they, they stretch out. The more cars, the more problems. And um, like this week, I felt pretty good and I just wanted to share this with you guys. Like if you're trying to sell something online or you're trying to buy something online, don't be a demo person. These demo people, um, I, I, it literally blew my mind that this person wanted something from me and became mean and, and insulting and angry. Angry because I wouldn't play his game because, I don't know, I guess his finesse skills were supposed to be on 100. I'm like, but once again, 
I am a person that understands the marketplace. And I know that if I hold on to that car long enough, I'm going to get 4,500 at least because it runs, it drives, and you just got to do a little work. But once again, um, I got another car that's wrecked. That's 10. And it's, it's just got the bumper hanging off of it. That's the only issue it has. And I'm saving that for last. Um, because essentially when I do projects, I take the hardest parts first. And as we go on, the project gets easier and easier. And so, um, we will see what happens with the weather. It's snowing in Georgia, but it's not sticking. So we will see. And it's supposed to snow later in the week. We will see. But yeah, that's been my experience with demo people and selling online. I'm telling you, if someone is serious, they're going to show up. They're going to show up pretty much on time and they're going to have money and they're going to buy. Like, like I said, I sold two wrecked cars this week for 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 five thousand bucks, two wrecked cars for five thousand bucks. And once again, like I said, if you have a wrecked car, you don't want to go to these sites. We buy wrecked cars. They're going to lowball you. The most you're going to get is a few hundred bucks. When if you have the right car for the right marketplace, you can get thousands. You can get thousands. You get literally for a wrecked car. But once again, this is an understanding of the marketplace and knowing that if there's someone out there, like once again, with these BMWs, I know there's a, there's people out there who are called tuners and they're looking for a good donor car or something that they can turn a few wrenches and make it better. I mean, there, there, there's a whole culture to that. And like with the Lexus, Lexus didn't make that many GS 350s. They're pretty hard to find, pretty hard to find. And it's a good product. It's a Toyota. So I, once again, that car, that car from me listing that ad on Craigslist, cause I didn't list it on Facebook marketplace. I sold that car in 12 hours, which means I could have got a little bit more money, a little bit more money, but you know, it's gone. We ain't gonna worry about that. But yeah, uh, one of the things we're getting ready to do because selling stuff is the easiest way for you to make money online. It's just, uh, I'm going to start doing some trainings on that and stuff. So there's a free training in the first comment. And then uh, we're at seven o'clock Tuesday. We're going to do what kind of business should you start? And I'm going to explain what you should be looking for when you start your business. Now the free section deals with money and money management and stuff. So, Go ahead, let me know. Have you experienced demo people? Have you had someone trying to get something out of you what they were mean and nasty and condescending? Let me know in the comments. That's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you later.